Kindred Aerospace would like to welcome you to your destiny. Hi guys, and welcome back to Switch Up. We are so close to 100,000. If everyone that watches this just subscribed, we would arrive there. Oh well. Remember, we'll be giving away another three copies of Children of Mortar in our next sales video on Sunday. So do try and catch that if you can, as we try and get towards 100k. Now today, we're going to look at Journey to the Savage Planet, which Shadow dropped about five hours ago on the eShop and was an instant purchase for me. We'll go through the performance, controls, as well as my first impressions on the game, and we'll look at the frame rates, of course. Is this going to be your next purchase? Well, let's find out. Now at this point, I'm just going to mention that the whole game can be played cooperatively with a friend. You can team up online, set up your own game and have them join you, or through local wireless if you want to do that as well. It's a nice little touch and perfect for this style of game if you've got a uh, friend to play with. First things first, let's go through the controls and different options you've got available to you. Other than the vibration and camera shake, which can be switched off, you do have an interesting option, which is the field of view slider. Now in PC titles, I very often set this to 90, and the default here is 80, and as you increase this, obviously your field of view increases. Now one effect of this can be that it slightly reduces the performance of the game, and performance is uh, something the game is certainly um, struggling to maintain, but we'll get to that shortly. Another interesting option in here is the ability to reduce the amount of chattiness that Echo gives and trust me my wife was like can you please switch her off she's doing my head in after the first hour so uh, that's something you might want to take advantage of. If you don't mind so we can make sure you're not crazy. In terms of the controls then this is where my first bit of disappointment creeps in and you know what I'm going to say there aren't any gyro controls and it was the first thing that I looked for. You do have the option of switching off or on the aim assist which is a super super heavy aim assist and to be honest it's quite useful especially if you're using it in handheld mode and it's nice to see the ability to invert both the x and y axis as well as increase the sensitivities I straight away cracked that up to 1.50 across the board. What I will say as far as the aiming goes with a pro controller everything feels quite good it's not the kind of game where you need to be very accurate and the auto aim or at least the aim assist does a good job of locking you onto targets so you don't have to worry too much about precision in this game onto the performance then so let's look at the frame rate overall the game is targeting 30 frames per second when you're inside the ship, it manages to achieve this most of the time, but there are still a few unusual drops, seemingly at random points. Now, when you leave the ship and enter the planet proper, it's hovering at around about 25 frames per second, which is noticeably not as smooth as I would like it. There are some frame pacing issues. Now, all of this makes it sound very negative, and let's be honest, below 30, it's not ideal. But for the most part, I was still able to enjoy the game, and it felt quite responsive. It looks to me like they've gone for a clearer image, so rather than really cranking that resolution down so you're looking at just a muddy mess, everything's remained reasonably clear. They've just taken a bit of a hit on that frame rate. So hopefully, in a patch or two, this will be up to a solid 30 and with no issues, but certainly there are minor drops, and we are nowhere near getting to 60 frames frames per second. Now in terms of the visuals on the whole, I think they've done quite a nice job on the Switch. It's very much from the Witcher school of ports, whereby things look good, but if you head it side by side with any other console or PC, you're going to notice a big drop in the overall texture resolution, the anastropic filtering, so the distance with which you can see the crisp textures. And you can always notice this because if you move forwards and backwards in a smaller area with a repetitive texture, you can see that texture kind of disappear after a very short distance. But still the art design and color palette, they lend themselves well to this type of game. And in handheld, it looks lovely. Now, unfortunately, for performance reasons, They've removed the ability to record a handheld video, so I can't show you what it looks like, but it's pretty decent, and that small screen makes everything look much more crisp. Overall, for the scale of the game, I'm not unimpressed. With a small bit of tweaking, I think they can get everything running at 30, and it just feels and plays well at the moment. The interior areas, they creep up straight away. Obviously, you've got shorter draw distance, so the frame rate and performance just improve. Lighting's generally quite nice as well. There is some dynamic lighting. You can pick up light sources and carry them around. In terms of the anti-aliasing, so how jaggy everything is and how much they've done to reduce that, it does look like some form of post-processing anti-aliasing is taking place, as particularly in handheld, you can see some nice straight lines on surfaces, and I guess this is probably to counter a lower than native resolution. And controlling your character jumping about the planet, 
aiming your weapon and killing enemies, it's all easily done. So let's talk a little bit now then about my impressions of the game because it's not a title I've played before. Now I've only spent about three or four hours with it so far and I've got to tell you it is so far up my alley it, it, there could be a sign on my alley saying journey to the savage planet. This is basically No Man's Sky meets a touch of Borderlands in terms of the humour and some of the presentation. It's got a whole lot juicier with Platinum Slurp Plus, Neutra Minerals, Power Booster Edge 20 million! And then the Outer Worlds sprinkled on top for good measure. It very much has that No Man's Sky feeling as you go about scanning different items in the world, gaining resources and then upgrading back at your ship. Now I loved the little FMV movie sequences with real actors, they just add such a level of quality. There's a bit of fallout in here as well I guess. And the dark comedy with which everything is delivered is nice, with different adverts being periodically pumped onto the on-screen terminals inside your ship. And the these are great. Just check this one out. With taste, flavors, and textures like beef, chicken, pork, chocolate mousse, pork candy, chili bacon burger, sunny manish. Now, other than upgrading your character, it has a touch of Metroidvania to it, in that you'll need new items to progress to different areas, such as the jetpack, which you'll acquire quite early on, and the grapple hook, which allows you to reach higher areas. As you go about the world scanning different items and murdering the flora and fauna, the trusty AI, who Yes, could be slightly annoying, but I quite enjoyed her. Gives you all the information that you need. Now, if you get lost, you can click a button in to track your next location, but the more you play, the game begins to open up and it lets you go off on your own path to some degree, with lots of different secret areas that, as I say, become more accessible the different items that you manage to unlock. There's a fast travel system that you get quite early on, which is a series of teleporters that allows for much quicker travel between different areas in your ship, which is really useful for a nice quick upgrade and then you can move on. Now despite appearances and the reference to it being very similar to No Man's Sky, what I like about the title so far is how handcrafted it is. There are telling signs like the end of dungeon shortcut, i.e. when you get to the end of an area there's usually a little shortcut that leads you straight back to the start rather than having to waste your time backtracking through loads of platforming sections. And there is quite a bit of platforming here, as well as some good verticality. Overall then, performance isn't as good as it could be, and maybe it should be at launch. But still, stability was decent, I haven't experienced any crashes, and I've still been enjoying the title. The soundtrack and audio is excellent, very crisp, there's no drop in quality there. and the voice actors, some of whom are famous faces, are on point. Mini Mall Monkey's Micro Mills Plaza, the ultimate Earth Life Simulator. Create tiny human life forms by just adding... Yeah, this is a game I'm going to really enjoy. I'm very likely to get you a full review of this one out because I can't stop playing it. Hopefully this has given you some idea as to whether it's worth picking up right now or waiting for a patch or whatnot. But if you're a fan of this style, then I think you will still very much enjoy it on Switch. Let me know down in the comments if you've got any other questions. Invariably, I'll have missed something in my excitement. But yeah, if you've enjoyed the channel, please do consider subscribing. Let's get up to 100k. Not that it's going to mean anything. It's just going to send us a new wall decoration. But for us, it's more than that. We've worked our backsides off on this channel. And we feel like we've built an awesome community. And we really do appreciate it. I better stop before I cry. All right. Big thanks to the patrons who support us each and every month. And remember... On Sunday, we'll be giving away another three copies of the Children of Mortar game. Thanks to the guys who developed that one for pinging us over so many codes to give to you. Oh, and we've got a half-term giveaway from a hardware company, but I'll tell you more about that when I know. For all things Switch, all the time, keep it Switch up. Cheers, guys. See ya!